elementary school and middle school, I really did not enjoy math at all. The arithmetic part of it, I was never very good at. Third grade, getting my, having your name on the wall with the stickers as you memorized all the different uh, times tables, and everyone was at the eights and nines, and I was stuck at the threes. So I really did not enjoy um, math until I got into high school. Um, and algebra is really where I started the problem solving and sort of figuring out that was really what sort of got me interested in math. Get into logarithms this unit. Um, that'll be the, the last half or three quarters of this unit. First part, exponentials and talking about it, what inverses are. Before we do all of that, we have to be reminded of a few things. And so I, I thought this would be a good way because I know a couple of you are heading into the medical field at some point in your life. I know a lot of students and a lot of people really dislike math um, and can be kind of scared of it. So I uh, try to make class a relaxed atmosphere. And so they um, try to get them to a point where they're okay making mistakes and um, that that's not a, a pressure-filled situation. And so trying to create that relaxed atmosphere is part of Sort of what I try to do. You looked at him yet? You work on the first page, Andrew? Just doing the first page today, and we'll do day two tomorrow. Geometry, we're going to be, um, they're going to be excited about getting back into doing some proofs, and so you might hear some moans and groans, but using uh, uh, coordinate proofs and doing those a little bit differently than we did first semester. So we'll um, get in the next chapters a lot of shapes and sort of proving that this is actually a sh which shape it is. Um, and then pre-calculus, we're going to be getting into um, talking about composite functions today, but using a, um, uh, a scenario with some tables where they're going to have to figure out what's going on and, and do a little exploring, I think. So. Do you remember when we were talking about the drawbridge? And so if the, if the span is 24, and this is 12, and this is 12, is it going to fit perfect? So to be a triangle, it's got to be a little bit more than 24, so they'll meet before they... I think part of it is uh, getting comfortable with yourself um, over the years and sort of uh, learning to be yourself in front of the classroom. I think especially with teenagers that they uh, appreciate that. And so I think my teaching style is sort of just being myself up there. Um, and I, I found the kids sort of appreciate that. Um, as Especially as the semester gets longer, they know I'm sort of... I think they get to know me as a real person and... Uh, um, I think that helps quite a bit. Yes, and I will collect homework as well. So if you want to organize all your homework as you're doing these warm up. So number one, we're supposed to order the sides. What's the first thing we need to do before we can do anything with the sides? So I use a um, Surface Pro, uh, Microsoft's um, tablet, uh, and I use OneNote to do notes and sort of import um, PDFs into that and Word documents into that so I can sort of um, have that up there. Um, and I, this year I actually figured out um, how to get that so it uploads right to the internet afterwards so they can go and look at it later if they want to. We're going to take g of t, and what are we going to do to that value? We're going to plug that, that value into, um, what was it, f of q. And then I have a, a wireless um, connection with the projector so then I can walk around the room. Ability to walk around and sort of um, you know, if the kid's talking, sort of walk over to them and sort of be closer to them and that proximity really helps. So as opposed to being sort of stuck in front um, by the document camera or up at the board, I've, um, it's definitely worth it for me. Negative one. So it's the right idea. So we put that x minus one in there into x plus two. In an ideal world, if I got to um, decide what we're doing, it would, would be very much problem based um, and sort of big problem where students were sort of working through something for you know, 15, 20 minutes at a time for each problem. Um, bringing in some technology like um, in using Excel or GeoGebra or Geometer Sketchpad, something where they're um, being able to explore and try different things on their own. And realistically, if you ask most teachers, math teachers, what they want their students to get out of it, they're going to talk about problem solving skills and logical thinking. And that's really what the problem solving is and what we need to be pushing and working on with students on. Number two, just real quick, so you have an idea how to get started if you haven't. If functions are symmetric about the y-axis, the y-values on both sides are equal to each other, right? 
For a lot of teachers, it's really just that love of working with kids um, and uh, interacting with teenagers and um, watching them grow and um, is really what sort of drives you as opposed to that, I, I need to get to that next place or I need to go get, um, you know, move up the pay scale, that sort of thing, I don't think is what drives most teachers. Um, and for me, the leadership role is just, um, what I enjoy about it is really just sort of seeing the big picture and sort of being involved in those conversations about what's going on and where we should be going and help, helping make those changes and make school a better experience for kids.